basic education for all of the students in the boundaries of the Edgecombe County School District. I believe there's no question. I do believe uh, we're therefore asking this evening if you will give us an affirm vote to allow us to do that. Thank you. just want to um, stand before you tonight to say thank you first to our county commissioners. Over the years, um, you all have provided the things that we've asked for so that we could be a school district that would create an environment for our students that would be um, impactful, that we would be able to support um, a, a positive tra trajectory for their lifestyle. I also want to thank our school board members that are here um, and just acknowledge them that they are here tonight um, and, and really just whatever happens this evening my job as superintendent is to make sure that I provide the best education for students that are part of Edgecombe County Public Schools. If there are questions later be glad to, to address. Thank you. Thank you. Now back to you Ms. Evans. Please call them in the order. At this time, we have, we'll call for public comments, and when you come forward, please state your name and address for the public record. So, Mr. Yes. Chairman, we had to sign up Ms. Teresa Bryant. Ms. Bryant. hopefully that may be more objective than someone who's really been in this. I know there's a lot of history um, of the individuals. I attended the May 31st um, meeting and I listened to a lot of the history. Quite frankly, I probably would have ended a lot of the conversation. I'm, I'm pretty, you know, let's get to, let's get down to it. A lot of it to me um, is not helpful. Um, quite frankly, more harmful um, and helpful. I am someone who comes before you who has always, since I graduated from law school in 1993, during the time period when the mergers, Edgecombe, Tarboro, and Nash, Rocky Mount, the, those were going on, and it was something of interest in, in law school as a student. I've always been in favor of Edgecombe County providing education for the students in Rocky Mount, always, okay? I was in favor of it when I came in on May 31st. I came to hear a plan, and even though I will tell you I have some issues with the plan or what I heard, I nevertheless left out still, you know, convinced that Edgecombe County should provide the education for the students who are in Rocky Mount. I've never understood it. I've never understood really this relationship we have or this arrangement you have with Nash County. It never made any sense to me. Why can Edgecombe County provide education for students in Pine Tops or Bowerboro or Tarboro, but there's something about Rocky Mount that you can't provide an education for them? I never understood that. And, and with all of the drama, if you will, over the relationship, the back and forth, you know, we want it, we don't want it, we want you to take it over, it sort of reminds me of, you know, a Gladys Knight and a Pip song, neither one of us want to be the first to say goodbye, but you need to say goodbye, plain and simple. Um, with regards to Nash County, I don't have any, Nash County is not, you know, something that's on my mind or what they have done or not done. Nash County has a, an obligation to their citizens, to their students. And sometimes, even though you may be aligned or, or friendly in terms of business and or personal, sometimes your interests just don't align. And it would make sense that you're going to, or a, an entity has to be led by 
what would be best for whomever they serve. And so I have no issue with what Nash County has or has not done. I would say to you, they've done no more, no less than what you have permitted them to do. So I think that that discussion isn't really helpful. From the standpoint of relationships, there was a lot of talk I recall about relationships and, you know, ending relationships. Well, as long as you are fair, you are, are upfront with them, you're motivated uh, to change this thing by purposes that are, are genuine and good, if you lose a relationship, I don't think you have much of a relationship in the first place. Um, with regards to the makeup of the district or the Rocky Mount, I mean, the children could be, have the misfortune of being Carolina Blue, and we still would have a duty to serve them. That's the way, it doesn't matter. It's your duty to serve them. Um, with regards to what I see, I don't think it's a merger, I think it's a misnomer to say merger and demerger. I don't think Edgecombe County Public Schools or even Edgecombe schools merge with anyone except for Tarver School. So it's not a merger or a demerger. I think it's a misnomer. I think that you have contracted out a very important duty to Nash County and it's time to pull the contract back. That's the way I look at it in terms of what they're doing. Um, evaluate the contract. You know, there are business people up here. But, you know, we have business people who actually provide services for other uh, business where they contract to perform services. How have they performed the service? Without getting into, again, topics or things that um, you know might cause distraction, the bottom line is the contract has not served us well. I cannot believe that you go year to year waiting for another county to tell you how much money they're going to spend for their schools, and then you have to pay for it. That it's just untenable. That it's an untenable position that you're in. Uh, I do have some issues with the plan. The plan needs to be um, more conservative, fiscally conservative, a whole lot more. We've got three schools, elementary schools, I believe, that are underutilized, and we don't maybe use two of those. We already have a middle school. The biggest thing for me, I think, is the high school and what's going to happen with the high school. But I'm going to tell you right now, I feel that you should lean on Rocky Mount. We need some money. The city of Rocky Mount is now, they're not paying the, making the gap pay um, payment. We need that money. And I hope that you all will lean upon Rocky Mount as it benefits the citizens in their municipality to have a school in Rocky Mount, an actual high school, that we can lean upon them and expect them to put out some money. And I'm talking about some serious money, not little money. I'm talking about big bank. I would be looking for Rocky Mount to do that. Um, so I, I do, I am in favor of it, and I'm in favor of it without having the formal plan. You've been compelled to do all kinds of things where you don't have a plan. You've been compelled to pay certain amounts. You've been compelled to take over gap month, probably things you had never thought about, but you did them. So instead of being compelled to do something, instead of being behind the ball, I feel like you need to get out in front of this thing. I think it's gonna come up again in some format, some shape or form, whether it be funding, or whether it be you know disputes related to even Nash County wanting to continue this. It's not going to end. And so I'm hoping that my board will get ahead of it and do something about it and vote in favor, as I say, of pulling this contract back, doing it yourselves. I think that with regards to the school board, I am a former member of the school board. I too have, I have confidence that the school board will be able to provide the services. I think that from a messaging standpoint, I'm not someone who believes that we, for something, started off something like this, we can put it on well. I have confidence in, Dr. Bridges, that she's going to do that. And I think Dr. Bridges is excellent. But I don't want a plan that's so unique to her where someone else can't do it because we don't know what's going to happen. We never know what's going to happen. I don't want that. I also think that um, any type of, you know, trying to sell the plan based upon that Edgecombe County is can do this or can do that when it comes to education, I think that has not been the greatest PR strategy because we know we've struggled as a district. We have, so that, that's not the way to go. The way to go is, look, these schools are F schools year after year where they are. Why do we contract out? We can do as well or better, I believe better than what they've been doing there. And I also don't want to alienate the people who are there. You got four schools, you got staff that are there that are probably worried about their jobs, what's gonna happen to them. And we don't know, we haven't been in, so we don't really know what the situation is with them why they have not performed as well as they have. So I think that there's some messaging issues. I'm always looking for consensus. 
maybe you have the votes, whether you have them or not. I think as a good leader, you need to look for consensus. And, and that's the best way, I believe, to lead. And I don't think that those talking points were the best points in terms of, and, and from my standpoint, in terms of people coming to me and asking me questions about that, that's sort of a lot of times they will go that way. And, and what I say to them is that, you know, I have confidence that we have, we have a situation where we farm something out and they're not doing, you know, the schools are not doing well, that we need to take it back. It's a financial um, issue for us as well. So I've gone over my time, but I thank you for your t um, my time this evening. And again, I hope that you will vote, as you say, quote unquote, for the demerger, and we can work on the plan. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next one, sir. Uh, next uh, is Mr. C.B. Dog. So I can get this one right up. Have you heard it? No, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. I am C.B. Daughter, a fellow commissioner, and I thank you, Mr. Chairman, and fellow commissioners, and uh, county manager, and staff, and all those others that are together here tonight. Um, <clears throat> this time that I can express my approval of the merger. First, I'd like to ask you a question. Do you give a blank check signed to anybody? Would you have you? I, I don't. Well, if you do not vote affirmative for this summer, that's what you're doing with Nash County. You're giving them a blank check, and it's going to get bigger and bigger. I can promise you that. I've done, I guess I've got the inside information. It's growing. It's going to grow. That 400000 or whatever that is. That's kind of a patsy. <clears throat> Additionally, the state law, that like it's been plant, uh, pointed out, I think, that uh, it's going to count we need to educate our own students. And what we've had uh, starting 30 years ago was a patch. And then about seven years, we come along and we readdressed the patch. You know, redressed it. We, we, we tried to put another patch on it or somebody to help us do it we, for us. We know patches are usually used for a healing period, when the healing period is over. It's, 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 get, it's get rid of that patch. Also, we're cheating, cheating, cheating our edge cone students uh, out of the opportunity for right now, I think it's about $2 million by the unbalanced county funding. You know, if we pay those students to go there, we're not equaling that fund the 7,000 we got. Well, that's cheap. And then, um, well, if there's no more than those three reasons, that's enough to vote for the affirmative for the merger. Uh, then um, the students that are <clears throat> moving back into our school system, I definitely would like to see a start a vocational training program uh, with a goal to, to expand it into the Edgecombe County, the full system, as soon as we could, could do that. Because we definitely need vocational training in Edgecombe County. And then I have some ideas about negotiation and addressing the merger plan, but let's hold them until we get this affirmative vote, then I'll come back to see you. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. Uh, next, uh, Ms. Faye Taylor. My name is Faye Taylor. My address is 240 Temperance Hall Road, Rocky Mountain, Tennessee. It's a pleasure to be here. I thought it was three minutes, and so I wrote it all down so I wouldn't go over my time. So if you'll bear <laughs> with me, I will read instead of talk, which is what I normally do, because I talk to the wall. But it's a pleasure to be here. <clears throat> Thank you to our commission board chairman, the members of the board, Dr. Valerie Bridges and all the guests for the performance and the opportunity to speak tonight on the consideration of a demerger between Edgecombe County and Nash Rocky Mount school systems. My community has asked me to represent them on this issue. I am proud of Dr. Bridges for her deep, caring, and enlightened approach as our superintendent. I want to make it clear that my love for Edgecombe County and the education of our children is extremely important to me. 
to do that, I'm giving you some background information. From teaching eighth grade at West Ashcombe to serving as an assistant principal at both Phillips Middle School and Martin Middle School, and then to being the principal at Bullock Elementary for 12 years, I have always enjoyed student education. After retirement, I even served on the school board. I was called to Toys Not Middle School after I retired over in Wilson to complete a difficult year there, which gave me an insight of the differences in various school systems. After 13 years of being retired, I missed education so much that for the last two years, I have served at Edgecombe Early College High School under the wonderful leadership of Matthew Smith. Once again, health issues have forced me into this time a permanent retirement. However, I'm always going to be concerned about the education in Edgecombe County. There are several issues that concern me about the demerger. First, let's talk about teacher retention and hiring. Let's talk about school safety. Let's talk about the effect of the pandemic on the value of education. Let's talk about uneducated parents who are now choosing to homeschool their children. Let's talk about your financial concerns. And let's talk about student scores and the transition period. Qualified teachers are very difficult to find when our supplement is 7%, they can go right over to Nash County for 11%. It would also be easy for Nash to choose the best of their teachers to fill their voids. The teachers who are now in their schools will be able to remain in the Nash County school system. We already have a shortage every year of teachers and no parent wants to find that their child does not have a qualified teacher in their classroom. Teacher retention is a great concern and has been for many years. We'll also have to find teachers for those who leave the area we're talking about and go to the Nash County for the, keeping the large money. So that's even more teachers when we can't even keep our staff full as it is. In our community, we've had qualified teachers who've moved to another county after one or two years with us. Do we really know why they leave us? Often it's a lack of discipline support. Our teachers are stressed out. Talk to the teachers. After the previous school shootings, parents are extremely concerned about safety they feel this area of Rocky Mount is high in drugs and gangs, and they look at the Rocky Mount police documents to reveal this as well as when they talk to the police. During the year and a half of the pandemic that we had, many students did not get any education at all. They were given all the capabilities to participate in virtual learning. As an example, one second grade teacher told me her students came to her this year with only one half of a year of kindergarten, and many did not even know their alphabet yet. One teacher said she tested her students to determine their needs. Then she put them in ability groups so she could help them move. She was told she would not be able to do that. <coughs> However, she decided that she was the one who had to answer for their education and learning. So following her heart, their growth scores, which I saw copies of this year, were amazing. Now, that's a true quality teacher. We need more like that. Before and after the pandemic, some parents have chosen to homeschool their children. Having taught eighth grade and knowing many of the parents in my community, I find it un, un uh, smart. I can't think of the right word. <laughs> I didn't put it in there. I skipped a word. 
But knowing the past failures and inability of these parents to teach, that's a con tremendous concern for me. And we talk about we want to educate every student. Well, we can't every educate every student when things like that are taking place. To address the financial concerns, I understand that EDGECOM has had to send allotment dollars for each of these students to Nash County, and we also have to pay a percentage for their new buildings, which are often nowhere near EDGECOM County. However, if the demerger takes place, there'll have to be a high school provision made because Southwest is overcrowded. There will also be great expense to repair their existing schools and assume any debts that they may have. Anytime students are in new circumstances, <coughs> there are going to be lots of adjustments. Any substitute teacher will tell you how they are treated and tried when they are not the teacher who gives the students the grades. Do we really want to put the teachers we hire for their schools through this period of Again, as a lifelong learner and a lover of Edgecombe County <coughs> for 55 years and of our school system, please carefully consider just how detrimental this change may well be for our county. Just this summer, I know of two families who have pulled out their students in my community. So, for teacher retention and hiring, for safety, for the effect of the pandemic on the value of education, for the uneducated parents trying to teach, for the financial concerns we may have, for the student scores that are much lower there and the transition. In summary, please consider all these concerns when making this decision. Our students and teachers are already having a difficult time at the best. Please think about having to get even more qualified teachers, retaining those that we do have, providing the best possible safety for our students, placing student value back on education, and keeping our education level up and moving rather than dropping for our county. Your decision will greatly affect so many in our county. Thank you for your time. Can I get a copy to the chair, please? Thank you for your comments. Do you. you have anybody else on this? That's all they had called ahead of me. There, since there are no other on this, anybody, any others here would like to speak? If so, please come forward and state your name and address for the public record. Is there anybody else to speak? Please come forward. Set your name and address for the public record. Reverend Rosebud Higgs, 127 Midway, Tarver. I have distributed some of these over the course of the last seven years and over the course of the last two weeks, we distributed over a thousand of these in the community. And I'd like to personally thank uh, news media, Van, Y'all see Tar River, this was done back in um, March the 5th of 2020. The Telegram, Bronson. I mean, the talk has been put out there, so I can't think of anybody that can say that they haven't, haven't had the opportunity to hear about this. And I just uh, pray that whatever decision y'all make, it be the right decision. And I did some homework. I found out that out of 100 percent 50% of people don't want to serve on public boards. I really was surprised at that. Another 30% want to, but for some reason they don't pursue it. So mathematically, that's 20% left. And out of that 20% left, 13% have strong reservation about making unpopular <coughs> so that leaves only seven percent that realize that every decision is not going to please everybody.
So I hope that y'all are in that 7%. And I'm speaking on behalf of the Edgecombe County Coalition for the Advancement of All People. I think it's time that we try to find a way to equalize funding for all of the students in the county on a fair and equitable way. And Mr. Chairman, I yield back my time. Is there anybody else here, please? Let's come forward. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. The Rocky Mountain branch of the NAACP encourages the Edgecombe County Commissioners to vote for the consolidation of all of Edgecombe County under the auspices of the Edgecombe County Public School System. We are saddened about and frustrated in the condition of the physical plant and the ratings of all four Rocky Mountain schools located in Edgecombe County. According to estimates of the Edgecombe County Public School Administration, it would cost over $10 million to bring Fairview Early Childhood Center, Johnson Elementary School, Baskerville Elementary School, Parker Middle School up to current physical plant standards. And also, I'd be remiss to mention about the closing of historical R4 school. We believe that under the Nash County Commissioner's leadership, and we know that some, I think it was three, that voted against it. But under the Nash County Commissioner's leadership, the Rocky Mount Edgecombe schools have been intentionally underfunded in the physical improvement staffing priorities, and programming creativity and support. None of the Rocky Mount Edgecombe schools currently meet or exceed state growth guidelines. From our perspective, this is both a travesty and an injustice, and we believe that our students deserve more, and we expect more. We have been struggling with the Nash County Commissioners, the majority of them, to keep our regional system intact that has brought about prosperity to both Edgecombe and Nash counties. However, we feel that fighting to stay tethered to people and systems who devalue our humanity and our children are no longer worthy of our investment and in energy. We enthusiastically are encouraged by the leadership and the track record of Dr. Valerie Bridges, the Edgecombe County Superintendent who has also been named the North Carolina Superintendent of the Year in 2021. We are excited that with the proper support and funding that the Rocky Mount children and families who live in Edgecombe County would finally see their, uh, their, their see, see them as being prioritized, their value, and will be invested in. For us, justice comes with a shift of our economic, social, and political capital, capital to consolidate under the United Edgecombe County. We believe that Nash County owes Edgecombe County. I can say that again. I would like to say that again. We believe that Nash County owes Edgecombe County and Rocky Mount millions of dollars that we pay, that they use to build and improve Nash County schools for which Edgecombe County students would never benefit. Refund the money or repair the schools for which Edgecombe County residents pay for. And today, for those who don't know history, I guess to repeat history. Studying history helps us understand how events in the past made, th made things the way that they are today. So we look back decisions that have been made in the past. That's why we're here today. And we hope that you would make the right decision. Uh, you heard the citizens today. Uh, we hope that you would make the right decision. And I have copies that I will leave with you uh, for the record. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your coming. Is there anybody else here to speak? <coughs> Bronson Ware, 1230, Hokie Road, Rocky Mount, North Carolina. 
I stand before this board to talk about the public hearing which we are in the midst of right now. To determine what is right and what is wrong, I think that is a, a huge battle that each board member has to really tackle with because I would hope that no board member has come here tonight with a made up mind saying what is the, what's the right decision, what's the wrong decision. But to listen to the constituents of this county, the children that I hope would have been here to, to talk about what their school experience is, what their expectations is for our community as well. I find it somewhat disheartening that throughout this process, there's been limited conversation with Nash County School Board to understand what is, as Section 7 talks about, uh, B, the transfer of all funds, contracts, obligations, assets, and liabilities relevant to the area to be transferred effective July the 1st from Nash Rocky Mount Schools Board of Education to Edgecombe County, including but not limited to the consideration of real property, <coughs> furnishings, improvements, encumbered and unencumbered properties, equipment, buses, bands, sports equipment, textbooks, and other instructional material, library resources, computers, and supplies. What really bothers and concerns me is liabilities. There's been no conversation in the public community about what liabilities exist. We're talking about this thing from a financial aspect, but we have not really looked at the totality of what we are breaking up, up what we're actually talking about embarking upon. We must do the full due diligence when it comes to do that, what we're talking about. As I understand history and, and understand the true significance and importance of history. Because one, when someone asks, why are we here, we understand that First of all, we're dealing with a city system that merged uh, with the county uh, uh, type situation. And that's how Rocky Mount got into the funding because Rocky Mount was, was funding those was through a special school tax. And when that stopped, of course, the legislation did it. And at the end of the day, when you look at the law and talk about who's responsible is that, everybody's responsibility is to follow the law. Nash County's responsibility is to follow the law. Uh, when it comes to building facilities, when it comes to uh, supplements and etc. And I, I heard someone say 11%. I believe Nash County's teacher supplement would be 12% and not 11. So it would be a, a, an increase of 1%, especially with the new budget uh, that we're hoping that the governor will sign. But there is a number of financial questions that I think has gone unanswered. I think there's a whole lot of emotional conversations in the community about what somebody might have done to somebody yesteryear, who was playing tic tac toe and who won and who lost. But the reality is the core of this conversation is about the children. The core of this conversation is how we make an investment into our future. And we cannot make that with, with grudgeness in our hearts. We cannot make that with envy in our heart. We cannot make that with let me get back at somebody in our heart. When, when I hear the passion from this board and people in the community talking about local former schools, I've never seen many of you in the National Rocky Mountain School System when it was there was talking about local former schools. I've never seen any of you usher in the conversation about how do we raise the standards of these schools. But yet, today we're saying that perhaps a way to change is to, to take our children back. Well, first of all, they were Rocky Mount children. They weren't ever in the Edgecombe County school system. So taking them back is quite an anomaly to me as to how we even use language like that. But again, we must be students of history. We must understand the context that is before us so we're making rational decisions about this situation. And if anybody asks, is Bronson we're as passionate about it? Absolutely, I'm passionate about it, about being a resident of Edgecombe County, going to the Nash Rocky Mount school systems, learning about this stuff day in and day out. But there, again, has been limited or virtually no conversation. Many of the questions that was asked in some of these public hearings and, and uh, in, right before this board, as a matter of fact, uh, questions that a simple phone call and a conversation with members of Nash Rocky Mount schools you could have had that answer when these board members asked for those questions. Because they're real questions and they need answers at the end of the day. And we talk about millions of dollars in gap funding. Is that number accurate? Or is the gap funding quite lower than millions? Because we see a $2 million figure out there, but that number is also what you would be funding Edgecombe County students at, at, at the same per pupil rate. So if we're having information put out there in the public space, let's be sure that we're responsible enough to say what, I, what you heard tonight is accurate, what you heard tonight was not accurate, and we address those things so people have a full understanding of what's really going on. Another piece before I sit down, 
there was a conversation that was had that said Ed, current Edgecombe County students would not be impacted by this change of the county line. Now, if children right down the street from my house who goes to, to uh, uh, Bullock School, who lives in Cold Road Apartments, you mean to tell me that this school system is going to bus some children still to Bullock School when you got schools right there at Parker and Baskerville? The, how, what kind of sense does that make? Let's be truthful and honest with people <laughs> at all levels of this matter. That's all I'm asking for uh, this body to do uh, when it comes to this school board situation. Now, do I like the idea that was presented about having children with backpacks on their bags walking downtown Rocky Mountain? Amazing. Amazing idea to see that, to see the vibrancy of a downtown Rocky Mountain. But at the same time, I have to have common sense too. I have to look at what is the financial implications of it. Do we, have we crossed every uh, T and dotted, uh, crossed every uh, T and dotted every I. Have we done that? And if we haven't, it's no urgency. There's no urgency in the moment. It, the, the best decision any board can ever make is taking the time to get it right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Is there anybody else here for public comment? Good evening and thank you. My name is Reuben Blackwell. I live at 912 Sycamore Street. I live in Edgecombe County most of my adult life now and pay taxes every year of that. Um, I like to say, starting out, that I respect highly most of the folks that I know, um, the comments that they've made. Um, as an Edgecombe County citizen and a Rocky Mount member of the City Council, uh, my children grew up in Rocky Mount. They attended each of those four schools in Rocky Mount that we're talking about. My son is 27, my daughter will be 25. Those schools are in the same condition today as they were when my children were in those schools. I'm a product of the 60s and the 70s, and I am the generation that was the first generation to benefit from integration. My children in Rocky Mount, Edgecombe County, grew up in more segregated school systems than I did. That's a huge commentary to me. So when I look at what the issues are before us today, the children in Rocky Mount are Edgecombe County citizens. We pay Edgecombe County taxes. We have to look to Nash County to have the largesse and the conscience to treat our children as well as they treat their own. I can say as a resident and as a leader that's been in these meetings and conversations, the reason why some of us have not been in more conversations is because when we presented hard facts and truths, we were excused from the room. We were told our presence was not welcome. And in Rocky Mount, we were told our money was not good enough. So I say to you, how long do we wait to value the lives of children who are going to school in unsafe conditions, who are being raised up in systems that we know are not well performing, even though standards keep changing from the General Assembly, there is still some benchmark of success <coughs> that's given. And we know for all the years that Nash Rocky Mount has had to improve those schools and the outcomes of education that every public school system is accountable to. They have failed miserably in Rocky Mount. I, for one, am not willing to wait and count dollars and time for more children to not matriculate successfully, for more dreams to not be able to be achieved, and for more folks to not be able to count on solid schools, building communities around them that create energy for young families to move into our city. Rocky Mount Edgecombe is being starved, and I ask you, that you make some more room on your plate 
which we are willing to pay for so we all can grow together better. Let's cut the bleeding. I love that reference about a blank check. It is a blank check and our children are the currency that we're allowing someone else to spend. Thank you, I hope you support this resolution to move forward. I have confidence in the Edgecombe County uh, our school board and their leadership and in your leadership. I think we can get it done. Every time we have our backs against the wall, we win. Let's work on the service. And it's just like ladies. Thank you so much. God bless you. Is there anybody else here to speak? If not, are there any questions that the board might have for the staff that they might need to ask at this time? Go right ahead. <clears throat> As, as I read through this section seven, <clears throat> it's concerning to me also when it says the obligations and liabilities that will come to Edgecombe County Public Schools. So I want to find out, I mean, the school board we have now may not be the school board we have the next time around. Superintendent we have now may not be the superintendent we have next time around. But has anybody taken a real close look at what those obligations will be what those liabilities will be, because we're talking about dollars and cents. And it's got to make dollars and cents to me. So I don't know if Mr. Privet or our superintendent can tell me the kind of obligations and liabilities that we're looking at, and has anybody actually paid attention to what those are going to be? Or even the manager. Maybe you can explain it to me. Well, I, I don't know the details of what they might be. I would assume that in general they are talking about any debt owed or any uh, payments that are due related to those four schools, which would not be unusual. Now, I don't know right offhand if any of those four schools have any debt. I don't believe that they do, but I believe that's what that section is describing, would you say? Yes, sir. It could also be any ongoing contracts the school system has for operation of the school. So I'm saying, has anybody, as of now, actually looked at what's on the table now? The liabilities and all the obligations that are on the table now for we those four schools. Well, so you're going, so you're going into it blindly if we don't know what you're taking on. Because it said you're going to have to pay for all of it. Now, I go to some Edgecombe County schools that can't even get band uniforms now. You're talking about you're going to have to get band uniforms for those students that might be at Rocky Mount. It's just a whole lot of stuff being transferred to the school board of education that I want to know that they say they could handle all of those. Because it's gonna come down to them, not you know, not us. We'll make the decision, but they got to carry it out. If I could, I'll try to respond to that. Uh, this is the first opportunity I've been dealing with this for over 30 years. This is the first opportunity that we've had based on the change in the statute to actually take the responsibility of our children. Uh, nothing about this will change unless this board makes a decision to merge our system. The schools will get worse. It has already been stated that um, they will do that to the capital improvement. I, if you have wrote down uh, Fairview and you look on the Nash, the administrative bill, it says Nash County School System. That's in Edgecombe County. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to this. We should place, I place no blame, any blame beyond this night, which is July the 5th, is to blame Edgecombe County for those schools. Blame them for these schools. I heard different, we have neglected these children our life for not bringing to our system. We can, we, we owe no criticism to nobody but us if we fail to do this. Uh, and I'm prepared to make a motion. And I have 
Yeah, unless the other time there's another board. We're going into it blind. We do not have a plan. Um, the Nash, the Edgecombe County, the schools in the Nash system that reside on the Edgecombe County side have about ten million dollars of needs. The existing Edgecombe County schools outside of Rocky Mountain have ten million dollars worth of needs. We haven't been able to fix. How do we think we can fix the need to spend? We we do not have a plan. We sat in a meeting with the uh, school board and asked about what is the cost really to, for the proposed high school in downtown Rocky Mountain, and we we didn't get any numbers. So we would be going into this completely blind financially. Edgecombe County is on faith alone. That type of mentality is what's got us to be the second highest tax rate county in the state of North Carolina have other buildings that need $10 billion worth of improvements. The collection of buildings is 10 million. We talk about sending money to Nash County, and I understand the concern about that. But for every dollar that we sent to Nash County and capital, we have gotten back that money and more. That's been proven to us, but not reported. Uh, also, when we find that motions drive it, we're looking for a reason of why things have happened. But we've got schools that are underperforming as well. We've got schools who need need the money. So I don't have a magic wand stroke. And I think that to go in with blind faith without having numbers is a mistake, and this county will, will suffer for years to come. We, we, will, we will undoubtedly be the highest tax county in the state of North Carolina, and all our citizens will go, didn't you know this before you went into it? So. Well, I'll tell you, at the end of the day, and the bottom of the line is this. There's no good that's going to come out of this as far as I'm concerned. We've got 1,700 students coming this way that really don't know. They really haven't been told what's going to take place. They don't even understand what's going to take place. And they, we're going to lose the best performing teachers we have. We're going to lose in every direction. That's just the bottom line. Now, we don't know who's right and who's wrong, but we'll sure find out, unfortunately. It'll be way too late. Position that they're in, that's the position that they're in. That's the position that they're in. And these are Edgecombe County residents. And most of them look like me. And we're saying, uh, some of the comments I hear, we're saying, let them rot. Let them rot in hell. Well, Mr. Chairman, I got to disagree with that because no, no, I'm not no, saying that. Not any, and that is all right for you to disagree. Okay. Okay. That's what we are doing, disagreeing here. Well, disagreement doesn't mean we want our children to rot to hell. I think it's very right. strong. That's yeah. don't, don't apply that to the county the commissioner of board. I, right. I, it's what I just stated. Okay, and it's what I feel. That's poor leadership. Maybe well, it's, 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 you call it what you like. That's what you got right now in terms of uh, what I feel common. Uh, and I said it with intent. So it's not, we won't take it back. I don't take it back, okay? Uh, if we don't, we stand that financially, the taxpayers of those citizens that are in Rocky Mount, we don't want to spend it there. We can spend it in every way we want to. We spend it in Kingsburg, okay? We spend it everywhere. But we're saying, what I'm hearing, I'm hearing is we don't take, want to take care of those children. You're hearing what you want to hear. I'm hearing what I'm hearing. Uh, maybe I'm reading it different. Well, let, let me add this. Go right ahead. Unlike some of you, I have been in many of our Edgecombe County schools over these last 21 years that I've sat in this chair. And I know several schools that I can call right offhand where the bathrooms don't lock, where the heat don't work certain times, where the air conditioning don't work certain times. And that's an Edgecombe County school that you already pay for on a regular basis. So my thing is, I don't want to stretch. I'm a taxpayer. I don't want to stretch myself or other taxpayers so far out when we can't even repair what we already have to take on more and more debt. I may not be even in this chair come 24, 25, you know. We couldn't even give the school board every penny they wanted this year for Edgecombe County Schools. Okay? 
So how am I going to say we're going to have all those pennies to make sure those schools get everything they need when I can't take care of working that way? But my thoughts are, I'm looking at we are the second highest tax rate in the state of North Carolina. And the more you have to pay for, that's going to have to climb up. I'm sorry. You're not going to be able to leave it where it is if you got more debt, more obligations, more liabilities. And where we can pay those teachers a supplement more than 7% because we're going to need some teachers. They said we, can't got, we don't have any now. I've talked to a parent whose child was in, had a, a teacher, a sub for half a year. We, okay, so I'm thinking about the future, even though I might not be involved up here. But I cannot go along to go along. I've got to see it how it's going to be paid for. Well, do, was, do this board intend to pay our teachers this year more than the supplement they're getting? No, but you're talking about as it increases other places, you think they're going to come over here for 7% when they can go across the railroad track? It's already that situation. But that's what I'm saying. It's, it's already that. <laughs> we're not changing any situation in terms of supplement. Uh, and you haven't showed us a plan of how many teachers it's going to affect, how many actual students, how many principals, the, the sanitation of, workers, all of that has to be a part of you making that decision to take on all of that. Well, as, as I understand what has to happen, uh, if we move forward with this, um, that actually initiates the plan. The school, we authorize the manager and the school board to establish that plan. As Mr. Evans stated for the first year, um, we authorize him not to pay it, and that's the trigger mechanism that goes in the, the following year, which would be 2023-24, is when we actually we start developing a plan based on the action of this board. The plan cannot be developed or will not be developed until such time as this board authorizes it. And we authorize it based on motions that we make. This board has not authorized the school board nor the manager to do that. I that, thought we did that three years ago. No, no, no. And when we gave them that hundred thousand dollars to investigate, <coughs> no. I thought that was bringing us the plan. We gave. They came up with alternatives. They have alternatives. There is no plan. There will not be a plan until this board authorizes. And that I'm not asking for a second on this. I would just read you what I've asked to be prepared. I'm not asking for a second. I move to declare that it's the intention of the board to initiate a town line merger of Edgecombe kind County of Public Schools beginning with the 2024-2025 school year. And to effect that transition for this board to direct the county manager to no longer appropriate current expense funds for capital outlay funds to the National School Administrative Unit beginning fiscal year 2023-24. And to authorize the county manager to prepare and execute any plans or document necessary to establish a county line school system for Hitchcomb County Public Schools beginning the 2024 year. This is a motion that according to the statute will initiate what you're talking about. That would not be done unless this is approved. That was, and I've asked assistance from Mr. Evans and Mr. Peters to prepare this according to what the statute would require. That would be the intent. I'm not asking for a second because there's further discussion for the board. There's nothing in that motion that tells me that we're going to be able to provide funds that's needed to do what needs to be done. There's nothing in that motion that tells me that we will be able to equip those schools, provide those schools, deliver buses, teachers, and helpers, maintenance, and otherwise. I've talked to a lot of people about this. And if you think the ADM money is going to bring these students over here and we, everything's going to be lovely, then you are wrong. And there's just no other way to put it. The, 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 we, excuse me. We, we are jumping into something that we have 
no clue about it. That's all it is to it. I'm it's asking, that simple. I'm asking the board to jump in what is our responsibility. There will be no more funding for those schools than what we are sending. So, so when will we expect to be able to educate our children? There will be no more funding. And it is it's our responsibility. It's the county commissioner's responsibility for their children. And you and we can we that, that we might have to cut some things that we do. But the, this is our responsibility. And it was the intent years ago to bring for us and when we went to district. So that we, we would bring people to this board that will understand the things that have happened to some citizens in this county and bring corrective action to this board. And it's time for us to, this will be, it's going to be a curve. This is a time to end this unfairness in terms of, of I would agree with some of the things some of our board members have done, have said. We, we, we look for somebody to blame. I'm not. And we blame Nash County for our failures. And our failures are that, what I sound like I'm hearing, that we are unwilling to, to take the necessary action to make sure that our children that we have supposed, we supposed to take care of this board, not Nash County, not Nash County. And I'm going to make this motion and ask for a second. I move to declare that it is intention of this board to initiate a county line merge of Edgecombe mm -hmm. County Public Schools beginning with the 2024-2024 school year and to effect that transition for this board to direct the county manager to no longer appropriate current expense funds or capital outlay funds to the National nice School Administrative Unit beginning fiscal year 2023-24, and to authorize the county manager to prepare and execute any plans or documents necessary to establish a county line school system for Eastern County Public Schools beginning with the 2024-25 school year. Can I get a second on that? I'll second. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by raising your hands. All opposed, please raise your hands. What did we get? Four, three. Motion fails. Next on the agenda, Mr. Chairman, you have a scheduled appointment for tonight.